Welcome, everyone. So, let me ask you a question. Are you here with me? No, I don't mean standing here, right next to me, facing the audience. I mean, are you mentally here with me? No, I bet you're not. You're probably sitting here thinking, oh, I just want to go home and sleep. I've had such a long day. Or, I have so much homework to finish, I'm never going to get this done. Or, what should I eat? Or, I need to check my bio grade, I can't fail that test. Etc., etc., etc. These are the thoughts constantly spraying up in your mind while you are in fact physically here, seeing me and hearing me, yet ignorant and caught up in the maze of your own mind. We all have been there at some point. Well, then he's going to take a couple dribbles 
And most importantly, he's going to take three deep breaths to calm himself down. And then he releases the ball. And guess what? He makes it. Nicely done, right? So that, that was him being mindful. You see, it just helped that NBA star even win the game. So we need to start practicing mindfulness. So how do you start? Well, first step, pay attention to your breathing. Notice your breath. Slowing down and being conscious of your breath not only helps you increase your energy, lower your heart rate, in improve your posture, and most importantly, it helps you calm down your nervous system. Remember, your breath is always with you, so it's a very easy way to practice mindfulness. Remember this, calming the breath equals calming the mind. Ever noticed how the tennis legend Roger Federer has this power of resilience to come back from the edge of defeat? Well, how does he do this? He does this by paying attention to his breath and taking long, deep breaths in the midst of his intense game. While there are other players standing there panting and gasping desperately for breath. By doing this, he makes sure that there's enough oxygen in his blood and his brain to help him stay relaxed and keep calm. Number two, pay, turn all of your daily tasks into mindful moments. This means just paying attention to every single thing you do every day. Like, for example, eating food, drinking a cup of tea, chatting with your friends. Just, just do each action the best way you can. Number three, uni task. This means giving undivided attention to just one single task at a time. Just one. Well, you may disagree with me by saying that multitasking is the way to go, but really, it isn't. Multitasking is honestly a myth. It makes you feel like you're accomplishing a lot more at a given amount of time, but really, it's very unproductive. Let's take the example of teenagers. I see many here, including myself. If you look at the life of a teenager, it's very complex. Teenagers are, their, their, their minds are bombarded with several different thoughts. They are overwhelmed with stress from school as well as their personal lives. And in addition to this, there's social media pulling them into this different, unrealistic world. For instance, I would be at my desk planning to start my six paragraph honors ELA essay about my independent reading book. And obviously, it's due tomorrow, right? So I would start that and then I would constantly, constantly be wondering what in the world my mom is doing with my phone downstairs and what she's concluding after reading all of my messages. <sighs> well, then I would get a random text from my friend on my laptop and they would be asking me what I got for number 10 on the expanding binomial algebra homework. So then, it would be imperative for me to answer, right? Because it's called being a good friend. So I would take my math homework out and start doing it and respond to my friend instantaneously. And usually, I'm always hungry after I come home. So I'm always thinking about what's cooking in the kitchen downstairs and I'm trying to guess what's going to be for dinner. Oh, I have to get back to that essay, right? So that I can finish it and then watch friends and catch up on all the episodes before they take it out of Netflix. Oh no, what am I gonna do? You see, there's so many thoughts going on in my mind in such a small amount of time. Well, don't forget that we used to be apes. And that is why they say that the mind is a monkey enjoying swinging from branch to branch. So, believe it or not, if you practice mindfulness repeatedly, your brain physically changes through the, through the process of neuroplasticity. During this 
process, your brain builds new neural pathways and connections to help support this mindful type of thinking. So how do you benefit from mindfulness? Well, first of all, it calms you down, it helps you focus on whatever you're doing, and it makes sure that all of your attention is on whatever you're doing. And it, it really helps you control your emotions in a proper way. It keeps you from overreacting. And most importantly, it helps you enjoy every experience of your life to the fullest. And if you realize these benefits, it will truly transform you as a human being. So now that you know everything about mindfulness, think to yourselves again. Are you actually here with me? I'll take that as a resounding yes. Thank you.